a human who has been lucky enough to have the time to read a lot and think things through, I try to see humanity and the world we live in without too many preconceptions. My studies and inquiries into the natural world have led me to conclude that humanity is harvesting the Earth's capital instead of the more sensible option, which would be to live off the interest, to use an analogy from the world of business. Nature has stored a large amount of carbon in the Earth's crust in the form of coal, oil and natural gas, which took millions of years to get there. Yet we are burning it within a few hundred years. We are converting it from solid and liquid to carbon dioxide gas, which is altering the composition of our atmosphere. We know that higher levels of carbon dioxide trap more heat energy from the sun, and consequently we get global warming. Or to put it another way, we alter our atmosphere and consequently the climate. Our modern society depends on these resources, and we know that newly discovered reserves are becoming rarer. We've already extracted and burned most of the easily accessible and therefore cheap oil, yet whinge like hell at the rising cost of refueling our cars. Let me make a prediction here and now. Oil prices will rise with the inevitability of night following day. Sure, there may be small fluctuations, but overall, the demand will outstrip supply, and that will force the prices up further. And because almost everything we buy depends upon oil directly or indirectly, the price of almost everything else will also rise. If people's wages do not rise as quickly, then we end up worse off. As I mentioned before, Britain relies heavily on imported goods, which arrive by sea mainly. While there is plenty of talk of hybrid and electric cars, I haven't heard much about new container ships which don't require oil. The same goes for aircraft. Aviation fuel has never been consumed at such a rate as today's growing air travel and freight industries demand. So even leaving aside the argument that pollution and global climate change are a bad thing, the fact is, or so it seems to me, that our technologically advanced globalized civilization is uncomfortably close to collapsing. Maybe not this year or next, but almost certainly before the end of this century unless we can make some major changes to the way we go about our human activities. Not only do we need to embrace renewable energy sources more rapidly than we're already doing, but we also need to figure out how to consume less, a lot less. This is tricky, because on the whole, those of us who take advantage of technology which makes our lives easier and more comfortable are not likely to give it up in a hurry and we can expect countries like China, Russia and India to increase their demand as they do this thing we call developing. A lot has been done to make power generation and usage more efficient. Who hasn't heard of carbon footprints by now? But it is my view that this is too little and too late and only tackles the effects of the problem and not the cause. So what can we do? First off, continue to do what we already are, in terms of building more wind farms, tidal and wave energy plants, as well as solar farms, and continue to use the energy we do more efficiently. Electric and hybrid cars are already becoming more popular, but they won't really take over until petrol, in brackets gasoline for my American friends, and diesel powered cars become significantly more expensive to run. Battery-powered electric cars have a limited range, which is fine if you're commuting within a relatively small area, but not much use if you need to drive across the country. The batteries themselves require nickel or lithium, depending upon type, which are themselves finite resources, but are not likely to be depleted until long after the cheap oil is gone. I'll briefly mention here an idea which I'd like to expand upon in a separate video. I'm amazed the large car companies are not already building diesel hybrids, specifically series hybrids. A series hybrid is similar to a diesel electric train in that there is no direct connection between the diesel engine and the wheels. The wheels are driven by an electric motor. The car I have in mind also has a battery which can be plugged into the mains at night and enable short journeys without the diesel engine needing to run at all. 
The diesel engine would effectively be a generator which charges the battery whenever it runs low. The other advantage of diesel over petrol is that it can be run on biodiesel without adjustment. So cars of this design would still be useful in a post-oil world. The electricity to recharge them can come from renewable sources such as those I mentioned before and the biodiesel, if needed for longer runs, can be produced without relying on fossil fuels. The technology already exists and is not prohibitively expensive. Similar biodiesel hybrid technology could be scaled up and used for the transport of freight. General Motors uses a similar concept in its Chevrolet Volt and Opel or Vauxhall Ampera, but it uses a petrol engine, not diesel. The best and most affordable battery electric vehicle is the Nissan LEAF, in my opinion. Expensive? Yes. But as I said before, if fuel prices continue to rise, these cars will become much more financially attractive. Toyota and Honda have been making hybrids for a while now, but they're more like conventional cars but with a bit of extra electric power, which makes them more efficient, but not that different from some ultra-efficient diesel-powered cars. Biodiesel in principle is a good thing because we can grow whichever crop we refine it from within a year. So the carbon is taken from the air, stored in plants, turned into biodiesel, burned in cars and the carbon is returned to the atmosphere. That's the important difference between fossil fuels and biofuels. One year compared with millions of years. We can't reverse the process of burning fossil fuels but we can with biofuels.